What's up everybody, welcome to the channel and today we're gonna talk about glycolysis. So what is glycolysis? Glycolysis is a process in which one glucose molecule is catalyzed to two pyruvate molecules. Also we gain two ADP molecules and this process is anaerobic so it means it does not need oxygen. The whole process takes place in cell cytoplasm and has 10 steps. So let's take a closer look. Here you can see 10 steps of glycolysis and we can divide them in two phases. In the first phase we use energy and in the second phase we gain energy. Now we will take a look at each step. So first step is a reaction in which glucose is phosphorylized to the glucose 6-phosphate. Enzymes that catalyze this reaction are hexo kinase or glucokinase. The main difference between these two enzymes is that glucokinase, which is found in liver, has much lower affinity for glucose. Therefore, it will be activated only when concentration of glucose is very high. This reaction costs one ATP molecule and it is really important because it traps glucose inside the cell, so glucose cannot leave the cell. Next step is pretty simple. Glucose 6-phosphate becomes fructose 6-phosphate and this process is catalyzed by phosphoglucoisomerase. In step 3, fructose 6-phosphate is phosphorylized on first carbon atom to become fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. This reaction is catalyzed by phosphofructokinase 1 and again we need one ATP molecule in order for this reaction to happen. After that, fructose bisphosphate aldolase catalyzes reaction in which fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is cleaved into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. This reaction is crucial because now from 1,6-carbon molecule we get two 3-carbon molecules. Further reactions of glycolysis will require only glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So in this reaction enzyme triosphosphate isomerase converts dihydroxyacetone phosphate into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate which leaves us with two glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecules. In sixth step, enzyme glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase catalyzes reaction that is sum of two reactions. First one is oxidation and then after that phosphorylation. As oxidant, we use NAD+, which becomes NADH, and for phosphorylation, we use free anorganic phosphor. Energy for phosphorylation comes from previous oxidation. The final product is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Next, enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase catalyzes transfer of phosphate from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to the ADP. The product of this reaction is 3-phosphoglycerate and of course one ATP molecule. Now, you may be asking why is phosphate transferred to the ADP and not the other way? The reason is that 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate has higher energy than ATP and therefore it has higher potential for transfer of phosphate. After that, 3-phosphoglycerate is converted to 2-phosphoglycerate by transferring phosphate from place on the third carbon atom to the second. Enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is phosphoglycerate mutase. In step 9, enzyme enolase catalyzes dehydration of 2-phosphoglycerate to phosphoenol pyruvate. Enols are high energy compounds and therefore they have high potential for transfer of phosphate. And again, phosphoenol pyruvate has higher energy than ATP and because of that it will be used to transfer phosphate to the ADP. So, in the final 10th step of glycolysis, enzyme pyruvate kinase catalyzes conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate into the pyruvate. Plus, we gain another ATP molecule. However, if conditions are anaerobic, pyruvate becomes lactate in reaction catalyzed by enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. The purpose of this reaction is to recycle NAD+, so it can be used again in next glycolysis. In the end, let's sum it up. In first five steps of glycolysis, we spent two ATP molecules. Then, in next five steps, we gain four ATP molecules. So, in total, glycolysis produces two ATP, two NADH, and two pyruvate molecules. Although 2-ATP does not seem much, most of the energy is stored inside the pyruvate. Thank you for watching this video, subscribe, like and see you in the next one.